shoulder bag or backpack? Well, which one and how big? Hmm. Well, let's have a talk. Hi, it's Jimmy Chang here, and yes, another episode of Carrying Your Gear. I have a question here. Do you prefer a messenger bag or a backpack? Well, let's have a fun discussion together. To demonstrate my thoughts on these two options, I would like to show you two brand new bags too. The RAF messenger bag and the Valkyrie backpack from Morally Toxic. Yep, very strange names indeed, but this is not a surprise to me at all because they come from a big brand, three-legged things. You know, they like to name their stuff quite cool, right? <laughs> and this is actually the sister brand focusing on functional and cool carrying solutions for your camera gear and more. And like I said, since these are brand new, I would like to use them as my demo and at the same time, talk a little bit about each of them and why they could be your next bag or bags. <laughs> Before I continue though, make sure your other half is not next to you because, well, you know what I mean. So there are three main things to consider about a carrying solution. First, of course, is about safely carrying your equipment from A to B. And second is capacity or how big a bag should you get. Third is about accessibility, how quickly you can access your equipment because it matters depending on situation. There are other factors too, which I'll also talk about some of them briefly later. But whenever I consider getting a new bag, I often start with these three things which fundamentally guide you to one of these two solutions here. No matter how cheap your camera and lenses are, they are not a five pound disposable camera. So a well-made protective bag is almost a must if you want your equipment to be carried safely, especially if you're an active type of photographer. And these days, it's common that a photographer carry gears that is worth two to three grand. So a well-protective bag is an insurance for your beloved camera and lenses. Of course, all bags, backpacks, and cases will carry your cameras, lenses, and your snacks. But how protective are they? You can get a bag from Amazon for as little as 20 pounds, but a premium bag can fetch a few hundreds easy. A bag, just like lenses, you do get what you pay for in the end. From materials to design to craftsmanship, and basically translate to protection and durability. As a bag fanatic, I've seen many kinds of designs before, from aluminum frames to plastic surround to just simple paddings. And there are always a compromise when it comes to size and weight. In theory, the thicker the padding, the better. Well, usually. <laughs> but as technology advances, these paddings are getting thinner and more effective. Like this latest morally toxic bag here, it looks rather compact but feels very solid. And look at the divider, it's wafer thin too. But don't worry too much as they offer great protection and rigidity so the bag stays in shape. You know some bags just go sloppy over time. And you'll find some similar sort of thin dividers in some modern bags too. This is just new tech. Using these high-tech thin dividers also means that the bag can fit more or making the overall size of the bag more compact. But one special thing I really like about this divider from Moro Toxic, which also different to the others, is the built-in pocket. Oh yes, thick or thin, I'm very certain that you know how many little gaps are wasted in your camera bag. But you don't want to just fill them up with your accessory without wrapping them first, as they could potentially damage your camera and lenses. So the chicken farm guys, sorry, <laughs> the designer of Moray Toxic work in a chicken barn, clearly know a thing or two about space utilization. And I like it. So now you can fill up these little gaps with filters, batteries, cables, business cards, as long as it fits into these little pouches. Great stuff. As with any high-end camera bags, external protection is as important as internal. Moray Toxic gives you a treated and tough exterior material that is water and abrasive resistant, which I have no idea what they're made of, but it feels pretty nice to touch. While light drizzle won't harm the bag or anything inside, it won't survive our lovely British winter. So the chicken farm guys generously provide a storm cover for those situations too. Like I said, thin dividers allows the designers to make the bag hold more gear or shrink the physical size of the bag. In this case, Morally Toxic choose the latter. Both the Rave shoulder bag and the Valkyrie backpack are pretty compact, and they do come with different sizes too. 15 and 20 liter for the shoulder sling, and 20 and 25 liters for the backpack. 
And that brings to my next point, capacity. How big a bag do you need? This may be the toughest question to ask any photographer. We may be the confident species, but we are also a worrying bunch at the same time. We often think plan A to plan Z and all these just-in-case scenarios. And because of that, we often overcommit ourselves when it comes to what to bring with us. It takes a lot of experience, discipline and guts to focus on just a few pieces to take at any one time. These days, I tend to use a very small shoulder bag when I'm out and about, often one, maybe two lenses with me and leaving me a very happy shoulder and back. But I do remember the days when I first started out carrying just about everything I had, including toothbrush and underpants. <laughs> My bag would be 15 kg, and I'm not joking. But seriously, there will be occasions where you'll be carrying a lot, like my commercial jobs for instance, especially filming. And that's also why I have many, perhaps too many bags and cases in my house. What I'm saying is that different bags for different situations. To me, a shoulder sling or messenger bag was a treat, especially when I'm out and about with a small setup, because it won't strain my body too much when I walk miles for photos. Then, when I do need to carry a few more lenses, a couple of spare cameras, or other accessories like tripods, potato chips, and beach ball. <laughs> and a backpack is a much better solution as the weight of all those expensive gear will be evenly distributed on my shoulders and not just one, making it much better as a transportation solution. There are obviously larger shoulder bags, but like I said, your body will cry and you'll also walk like a weirdo with one shoulder up all the time. A backpack also has another advantage over a shoulder bag, is the ability to hold more than just camera gear. There are increasing number of bags that can double as a day pack, aiming for city adventurers. So you can put mixed gear and some personal belongings. Both Valkyrie backpack and Ralph show the sling have a wetproof frog pocket, or just basically a wet pocket, for jacket and other personal belonging. But it's also padded, so you can use it to store your camera if you want quick access too. Depends on what type of photographer you are, you may want to choose one over the other. But in most cases, I can see a lot of you having both of them for obvious reasons. This could be the deciding factor on choosing one over the other. You may be a strong youngling with a metachlorine count higher than Yoda, but if you want to access your camera like Clint Eastwood pulling his gun in The Man With No Name, shoulder back is always going to be quicker. And this is also the single reason why street photographers, journalists, and wedding photographers prefer shoulder bags over backpacks. But remember, not all photographers need quick access. Wildlife and landscape photographers, for instance, prefer time to set up their shots, especially wildlife photographers as they often carry long and heavy tele lenses. And backpack is the only carrying solution, as these huge beasts just won't fit even the largest shoulder bag. Most modern city backpack has a back access to the main storage compartment, and this is obviously for security reasons, but it is slow, as you have to put down your bag before you can touch any of your gear. But some of them has a side access where you can quickly sling over and get the camera out quickly. This may seem to be a way to counter the slow back access, but remember, if your backpack is loaded, slinging it forward can strain your back too. Also, a quick access is only for the most frequently needed gear, but not for anything else. A shoulder bag, however, you can literally access anything pretty quickly. Therefore, you need to assess the type of photographer you are and your preference in accessibility. Those were the three main reasons I think you need to consider whenever you choose your first or your next bag. But there are other features that you may also want to include in your purchase decision. For instance, most shoulder bag is made purely to hold a camera and a couple of lenses, and some small accessories but nothing else. If you want to carry a tripod for some night photography, you are pretty stuck, or you have to carry it separately. We live in digital age now, and many of us would process and share our photos on the fly. So, you may also want to consider a bag with a dedicated laptop compartment too. Like the 25 litre Valkyrie here, it holds my 16 inch MacBook Pro with ease. And the smaller 15 litre Ralph, well, it holds my iPad Pro. And lastly, pockets. You want lots of pockets. You're buying a carrying solutions at the end of the day, so why not get one that has as many storage compartments as possible, right? You may not use it, but again, it's just well, one of those just in case scenario. 
you may want to have extra where you can store some more for your travel and if possible, one with some secret pockets like both of these morally toxic bags here where you can hide some of your valuable documents and cash too. So there you go, what type of carrying solutions do you prefer? Are you a quick access photographer or a long haul tracking photographer? Let's have a chat together. I may have too many bags, but one thing I can tell you is that I have both types and I do use them for various reasons. As for these new bags from Moray Toxic, well, they're as good as any premium bags with some clever features that I personally like. Notably, those little pockets in the dividers that utilize every inch of the empty space in the bag that are usually wasted. And you know I love my bags, and both the Valkyrie and Ralph are smart looking bags with distinctive materials and design. So if you're looking for new bags, yeah, have a look at these guys too. And I will put the link in the description so you can check them out yourself. Now, I just need to have more reasons to tell my wife that I want to keep these guys in the house. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Carrying Your Gear. And if you do, remember to give me a thumb and click the sub button if you want to see more reviews on photography, video back and cases. And of course, Olympus. Peace. What do you think of this? I actually quite like it. Sucker! I now have too many bags. But I like my bags. I do. I do. You know what, yeah? There are two bags, yeah, obviously. Which one do you like more? The uh, messenger or the backpack? Personally, personally, between these two, between these two I'm talking about, yeah, I like this more. I like the backpack. I like the Valkyrie. Because um, first of all, it's versatile. It's got this big laptop compartment, fits my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Not many bags out there can do that, I'm telling you, unless it's these gigantic, huge things that I don't like. So yeah, it's actually pretty good. This is my baby now, my new baby. It's quite nice. Look, look at the thick padding, really thick, comfortable. That's what you want for a bag, right? Comfortable when you're carrying it, when you load it. When, when you're loaded, when the, when the bag is loaded. <laughs> I want, I wish I'm loaded. Anyway, I'll see you all later. Bye for now. Didn't do that though, did I? <laughs> Bye.